What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. I got both of my co-hosts on the line with me. I got my man, Jay. What's good, man? Not much, man. Just want to look forward to get into this episode tonight. Hot topic here. But want to give a few shout outs here. I want to give a shout out to Miss Deidre. Appreciate your donation. Always supporting as always. Can't do this without you. So want to say appreciate you. Salute to you. Also, shout out to New Jersey Shade. Thanks enough for allowing us, you know, to post on their platform, bringing us more exposure. Don't know who run the page, but shout out to y'all. And last but not least, shout out to the New England Patriots defense for getting me into the playoffs. <laughs> needed them, I needed them to come up big. And man, they got it. They covered the fumble for a score. Scored me 20 points. Got me into the playoffs there. But I want to mind you, you can follow us and on TikTok as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at the Holder Husband Podcast. All right, T. Uh, I got my man SD. What's good with you? Oh, man, nothing, man. I want to give a shout out to the Hold a Husband podcast crew because we all made the fantasy playoffs. All right. <laughs> so yeah. good job with the, for the fellas. Absolutely. You know it's all good. But I also want to give a shout out to Brother Soul Productions for always keeping the background audio fresh. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on Cash App and PayPal. Uh, I want to remind y'all, y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on the core94.com. Uh, and uh, now you can watch the podcast on Spotify. Um, they have started accepting video podcasts, so you can either listen to it, the audio or watch the uh, actual video version. Uh, tonight's episode is called Pandering Gone Wrong, uh, and we're going to be sharing our thoughts on the Derrick Jackson scandal. Uh, but before we get into all of that, we, we got more than enough topic on that. Uh, but y'all know how we do it around here, man. We like to discuss other things that we've seen on our timelines that have been trending. Uh, so we got some some interesting videos to, to take a look at uh, this week. Uh, now, this first uh, video is uh, this holiday season in the spirit of giving. Uh, the question was posed. Uh, is two coochies considered a gift to a man? Let's take a listen. I don't think that coochie is a gift, fellas, but two coochies, that might be a gift. Okay. Coochie. If you and your partner have never done something like that before, two coochies ain't a gift. If I bring an attractive female that I know you will also find attractive, does that not count as a Christmas gift? Now, fellas, I'm not saying go tell your girl that you want two coochies for Christmas. Stormy told me to ask you for two coochies. That's not what I said. If you are trying to give your man the same coochie that you gave 359 days before that year, I don't think that's a gift. But if you want to spice it up and add in a second coochie, we may be on to something. Now that's beginning to sound like Christmas. There See? we go. Okay, okay. I love the I love the thoughtfulness. Uh, I love yep. the creativity. Uh, I would I would consider doing something like that a gift if, if it's um if it's something that you haven't done before. Uh, but beware, having a threesome can be one of the the most detrimental things you can do when in a committed relationship. Uh, a lot of people don't have the emotional maturity to handle all the side effects that come from it. Uh, so even though it may be great, it may be, you know, great to talk about. Um, a lot of people have ended their relationships over. What y'all think? Um, I think she's right. Uh, the same coochie that you've been getting <laughs> for five years, whatever the case is, is not a gift. It is not a gift. And when a woman acts like it's a gift to you, you in trouble, my boy. But yep. two coochies. <laughs> and one that you ain't touched before, now that that's a gift. You know what I'm saying? Because she bringing it to you like, here, here you go. I'm good with it. No. But, you know, like like you said, Terry, I have seen this go bad more times than I've seen it. Man, before. it was just a um, a story went went viral this week about a threesome with, gone wrong. Where the dude the dudes killed him. Sure. Yeah, shot each other wow. and killed each other over after the fact. Damn. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know the details. I ain't heard it. But, <laughs> yeah, man. What would you think, Jay? <laughs> man, I mean, definitely gift. I mean, definitely an outside the box kind of gift to spice things up in your bedroom. But like you said, a lot of times people don't have the emotional maturity. Like, women might catch feelings that that she brought into the bedroom, or the dude might catch feelings ready to leave his, you know, significant other for that woman. So those things happen too. So yeah. you know, it can go either way. It can go good. They have a good time, keep it pushing, 
or somebody catch feelings and it goes south like like the story you just said, Terry. Well, it, it don't even necessarily got to be the feelings, though. It, it, it's, it's like several dynamics where things could go wrong. Like, because yeah. the girl brought in her coworker or her cousin or somebody that's mm. close to her, and now they her, might smash her man behind her back or the insecurities right. may, you know, rear their head and things like that. Yeah, cool. man, that's, it's, it's all bad, man. But I, I just want to say that... Uh, Two women is a threesome. Two guys is a train. Ladies, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Two women is a threesome. <laughs> Two guys is a train. You have no Dude. business with another set of balls oh. banging your lady. I'm sorry, but <laughs> on either side, it just it's just bad all around. So for me personally. Why are you I'm shaming gonna, the ladies, bro? There are, women, there are a I lot of women that no, like I'm that. Just, they, they they like trains. It's okay. It's, it's, I mean, but there okay. are a lot of women take offense to the to that terminology. I, I remember I put up a post that that basically said the same thing. Like, but, you know, two men and a woman. You think you call most people call that a train? I I don't look at it as negative. I just always thought it was like because how a train connects with the, connects, with the yeah. car in front of it or whatnot. Like that, you know, somebody's getting hit while the other person hit it from the back. That's always that's typically how it goes down. So that's what I always thought it was called a train for, or one after the other. You know what I mean? Like where it's yeah. multiple guys running a train on the chick. But man, a lot of people are offended by that terminology. It know? is what it is. But when you get out here in the dating world, tell a dude that you dating that you that you let two dudes <laughs> hit you at once. I don't care what you call it. You could call it a threesome, or you could call it a train. Dude gonna look at you like he probably ain't gonna take you serious after that. Nine times out of ten, he gonna be like, "Really? Right. You let you let." That's why. Know? But Dang, you that is ass. more reason why women lie about their like, body counts and stuff like that. Because right, because of is. that. Yeah, I mean, is. you're right. Um, what this is, is what it I'm is it about. worth the risk? Uh, going to your spouse asking for a threesome because I think just asking that can open the, just, open the doors for problems. Yeah. I, I would say no. I'm in my opinion, the only way why I see that this can really work out if let's just say you go into with that agreement or really like you know going into that polyamorous lifestyle, we got to get old girl um that teaches a class that we had here a couple of years ago. Man, let's speak yeah, about Kenya. it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a recipe for disaster, me personally. Like whether it's, you know, you bring a woman up in here or whatever, because mm -hmm. you never know how that's going to go. And I think that most men that engage in threesome activities with their woman, it turns into a license to just sleep with other women. Because other women. If, if you okay with me sleeping with other women <laughs> while you're there. You there? Right. I know you ain't got no problem <laughs> with me getting some head after work. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, because you ain't there, yeah. you ain't got to see it. It's so a slippery slope. Oh, right? yeah. That's slippery how a lot of men, that's how a lot of I'll men get about it and rationalize it. Or so, get, getting some head, getting sloppy top on your lunch break or something. Yeah, so what? Yeah, like, it, uh, you watch me bang this chick guts out at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> but see, but, but, but. For most people, though, it's not necessarily the sex itself. It's the trust. It's the deceit. It's the doing it behind their back. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people that that even have open relationships, that'd be a problem. Like they say, all right, we're going to be open and transparent. And then you catch one person lying or, or something about something like that happens. So mm -hmm. it's the deception yeah. that usually disrupts the flow of the relationship. Yeah. Right. Now, if I'm going to get married or, or, you know, if I'm going to get married, I don't want nobody in my bed with me and my lady because it could go the other way. Your lady could really <laughs> get turned out by this chick. And now you sitting out, now you gotta beat off because she over here with this chick. Like, no. like you never know how it's gonna go. I don't want nobody in my marriage bed with me and my woman. I, I, get all that extra. I mean, honestly, when you just bring somebody else into bed, there's just so much room for error. So much can go wrong there, as we just yeah, stated here. I agree, man. Let's let's keep things rolling, man. Um, this next video um, is a, some. It shows a woman addressing a very popular term that we see used in our comment section very, very frequently. Uh, let's take a look.
And hold on, wait, wait, wait. Did you just say every woman here is a pick me? More or less. Not you. Probably. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. How is, how is understanding how the other species operates and how what they value what they want how is understanding them a pick me when we always because say when we wait 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 when we always say that they need to understand women they need to understand women it's like how are you supposed to be in a relationship with someone you when you get in a relationship with friends you try to understand your friends who and you want them to understand you so you can grow that relationship so you can be the best friend they have in that relationship how are you going to be one-sided and say oh we don't need to understand men we don't need to know this about men they need to understand us and how we operate and that's a pick me if we try to understand how they operate to be able to have a good relationship to not be single at 40 with 12 kids to not die alone with a dog okay if you subtract those last five seconds where she said uh, die alone with a dog and all that <laughs> um I agree with everything else she said. Like she didn't have to go to that extreme of an example uh, to make her point. Um, yeah. She pointed out the hypocrisy and the idea that women constantly talk about men needing to understand them. Um, and then when you come to try to give a male perspective on things, women will either dismiss it or argue it. You know what I'm saying? Like even though they, they have no experience from that perspective. Uh, so yeah. the the whole pick me thing is is always been so oxymoronic to me because mm -hmm. don't all women want a man to pick them as his wife? That's the that's the I that is the goal. goal. That's the goal. But nowadays, you have women out here that want to be as combative, unpleasant, and uncooperative as possible, and think they're gonna get picked. And when a woman is agreeable, reasonable, understanding, and, and flexible with a man and to a man's needs, they are the ones called a pick me. Well, that's the object. I want to be with a woman <laughs> like that. And so do most men. They don't want to be with a woman that's combative and argumentative and don't want to be flexible and compromise with them. Like, there's I some dudes that glorify toxic women, like yeah. women that are violent and women that are is super insecure. Like, there are some guys that actually like dealing with that type of stuff, but that's not those those dudes who usually have something wrong with them. That's what I'm saying. They're not, they, they're not the type of men that these women want to marry or be with long term. Sure. Them the type of dudes that you know you might if you're attracted to them. Go have some fun with them and, and rats right. and some wiener. Like, that'll be the type of dude that you'll go have, have fun with like that. But when it mm -hmm. comes to somebody you want to actually marry and stuff like that, you don't want to be with no dude like that exactly. that want to be around all that nonsense. Unless you that, you know, type of woman. But I'm sorry. I just don't want to be bothered with no chick like that. Exactly. The, the, like, the pick me stuff, they, they kind of just throw that around willy nilly, over, especially over the past several years. It's like any woman that says anything that doesn't align with a lot of these women's yeah, ideology yeah, or yeah. they're breaking so called sister code, you're a pick me. Yeah. Ain't no sister yeah. code. You're right. Ain't no sister <laughs> code. They, they lie to each other about everything, they lie to each other and hold each other down. So that the mm -hmm. other one don't get more than what she got. That's why so many women give each other terrible horrible, dating advice. Horrible advice. They give them terrible yeah. dating advice because they don't want them to get uh, a man. Girl, leave him. Leave him. Then it don't even be nothing that serious. Especially from the but see, the, 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 the thing about this argument, though, is it's like it, it, it shows me that women are not paying attention to what's going on. Because mm -hmm. men at all levels understand women. That's how even the guys that are at the bottom of the totem pole are able to have multiple women because they pay attention, they peak game, they see how they, they learn what works, what doesn't work. These guys, these fuck boys are able to finesse these women with college degrees, business owners. You know what I'm saying? Like these women that are that are out above them on, on every level imaginable. These guys have peeped game enough to women to understand what they need to do to have success with them, even if it's temporary. And so I don't understand why women act like they, they, every time I talk about the importance of women understanding how real men think and operate, they instantly come back with like, no, oh, you need to understand us. And I'm like, why? We see y'all failing. Why do we need to understand this, this flawed ass game plan that women are using in, in the dating world? 
But you you know you know what it is with a lot of these women, they would rather lose doing it their way than to win <laughs> doing it somebody else's way. Think about that. I, I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't they don't really a, a lot of women just don't care how men feel and what they think because because especially women in a prime and, <laughs> and women that's that's pretty. When they're in a prime and they pretty and they get so much attention from men, they don't care. But when that slow down and, and things ain't coming at them like that no more and those options that they think they have when they prime, when those options, those sexual options ain't there as much as they used to be, then they want to know, well, what do, what do these men want? <laughs> yeah. It's too late by the end. It's usually a couple kids later. Yeah, it's amazing yep. how many women, and I'm talking 30 plus, that's been out here dating since 18, 12, 15 years, whatever the case, don't know what the type of men they want want in a woman. Be just True. being feminine, <laughs> just being feminine, now, they don't know I that. saw something, I saw something on online recently, uh, I forgot where it was at, uh, but it was somebody was posing a question or, or making a, the uh, comment that the modern women are more their goal is to become a mom more than it is to become a wife. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Think yeah. about it. Just just look at the community. But you, but you know what? I still want to touch on your point about a lot of these women in, in their prime doing this, right? The mm -hmm. ones in their prime, especially if they're at least some of the track, let's just say a seven above for the sake of the conversation, they're used okay. to getting what they want out of the dude, right? In their prime. Oh, yeah. dude, dude is willing to trick off on them, fly them out and do all this other stuff, right? And yeah. then once they get in their 30s, you know, early to mid 32 and up, right? That stuff starts to dry up a bit. That's when, it, you know, the guy that they didn't want, that's when it's, hey, big head, they sent him one of those texts. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess glory is this single life is glorified, but that's yeah. not ultimately yeah. what they want. Um, no. So Most it, it's just ironic to see so many women that support being single and so and, and create this division between men and women oh. instead of teaching women the things but, that are making men fall out of love and but, choose not to marry them right but Terry, but think about this think about what's been promoted and glorified especially the better part of the past two or three years the city girls and the hot girl summer and all women is just flocking to do that but they know yeah. they're not really about that life look look <laughs> what happened when diddy announced he, he just had a baby you they may right. uh Oh man, they hot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They like, upset. The same ones that just get, I just want their bag. I don't give a fuck about a nigga. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah. That's because the innate desire and purpose of a woman is to be with a man and have kids. It is what it is. It's the desire that most the majority of women have. So a lot of women nowadays suppress that desire because of social media, how they were raised, different things, music, TV, whatever. Suppress that desire to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, and, and just do their thing for all these years. But when it comes down to it, they really want that man and family in their life because it's a natural desire in Security. women. To yeah, be period. that way, yeah, especially with a guy with, with Diddy money, you know what I mean? Like that's like all, all the gold diggers' dream is to that's be one of Diddy's chicks and get pregnant. You know what I'm saying? That's, like, yeah, that's right. that's different. That's different. You know what I'm saying? He paying a chick two hundred grand a month, two hundred k a month. Yeah, I mean, come on, most. A but lot I mean, of obviously, we we know that that's the extreme <laughs> end of it. But absolutely, even even when a woman is getting that, you she was just on TV talking about how she want to have his baby. And then he pop yep. up with her baby from another chick. You know she's in her feelings about that. You know of what I mean? Course. Yeah. And she was just I, like, "Hey, uh oh, I, I feel like we go together." And he was like, "Man, I'm single." <laughs> he told single. her right then. He said, "I'm single, man." But she's still hanging around, ain't she? I'm she's fine. still hanging around. She's hoping. She's hoping to get something out of it. She ain't just hanging she, she around for the sake of hanging around. Don't she? <laughs> she getting paid. She getting paid yeah. two hundred k a month. Like, I mean, most women gonna do most women gonna do that, but outside of sex, a lot of women don't care or know what a man wants. That's why they always talk about sex and what they can do. They don't talk about how feminine they're gonna be and, and cooperative with a man. 
They'll talk about how loyal they gonna be with the man. Yeah. They talking about they talking about what they gonna do to you in the bedroom a lot of these that's, because that's all they know. Yeah. And that's the disadvantage that they are in once they get a little older and they have to have substance about themselves for a dude to pick them for a wife and give them his last name. Now you gotta have substance. So just the sex not gonna don't work it. for that type of guy. And, and, and especially for the guys that have had success with women. You know Absolutely what I mean? Like not. we talk about it all the time. The guys that are able to uh, consistently get attractive women to, to be interested in him, to sleep with him, it's very difficult for him to select one. The things that they use to eliminate women are very, usually very, very petty. If, if you have never watched, go watch <laughs> Boomerang. Eddie Murphy, 1992 <laughs> Boomerang. Talks about, that's what, man, I learned of so much game from that movie. But it, it shows you, man, yeah, it, it takes a skill set to be able to attract the best women, but then you come into the dilemma of when are you being too picky? When are you, you know what I'm saying, being too shallow? Hey, man, because listen. you can miss out on a quality situation over something real petty. You could, but when you, but when you that dude, when you a guy that's <laughs> in the upper, in the upper, upper part of men and earnings and looks and how you talk and your swag and all that, you got a lot of leeway to be to be picky, right? So in the movie, Eddie Murphy was a top type of guy. So he cut the chick off for what? Because what? Beat. Her feet. Her feet. I, I, was was gonna, I knew you were gonna go. Hey, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, I have done it and I'll do it again. <laughs> because hey man, I will not deal with busted feet. I'm sorry. You might be a great woman. But it ain't no different than, than, than a chick if, if a dude is a really good guy and he pulled out two inches on her, she gonna be like, oh no, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing with them. Like, it's all good. That's the way, that's the way it go. But a guy like that, that's a top guy, he can be picky. He can be a lot more picky than the average man out here because- Now, think know, about how ironic that is him. though. We're talking about how the, the men and women really won't get to be picky. But yeah, we're right. doing it on a segment about pick me. Like, it's like, duh, y'all want the men to, that are very picky to be very, so selective that he chose you out of all the women yep. that he could have had. That's yep. ultimately what women want. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of women think and operate in ways that make dating them or just being in, interacting with them consistently so unpleasant that their interactions yep. with men never get to that point where the dude's even thinking about marrying her. You know what yeah. I mean? Because uh, yeah. when and I get asked yes. this, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say when I get asked about it, women ask me stuff like, how do you get a man to want to marry you? And I'm like, man, just be very pleasant to be around and <laughs> meet his needs in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that that's the, the woman that is meeting your needs, is, that you're having a good time with, and she's sucking the skin off. Ooh. You ain't really got no reason. <laughs> you ain't really got no reason to stop hanging out with exactly. her. No, you don't. But this this is the thing that, that a lot of women don't get. Let me give y'all a little game real quick. Those men that y'all that y'all want, that's that top 20% of men, those guys know the game. And they know women. So when they get with you and they see things in you that don't match well with them and, and, and a wifey material type of trait, they're going to leave you alone. They can peep it like that. They can peep that stuff and they're going to move around from you because you ain't there where you should be to be dealing with him. You got to qualify to deal with a man like that. Your looks just True. don't qualify you and your sex just don't qualify you. It's more substance-based. And if you ain't got that substance that, that he wants in a woman, that, that femininity, that submissive attitude, that reasonableness, that understanding, that loyalty, and that respect for him as a man, he's not going to be bothered with you. But you'll have, you'll still have those 40, 400 dudes in your DMs trying to smash you, yeah. but you won't have that husband material man trying to wife you. That's what you want. True. Big facts. All right, man, look like we up against the clock. Uh, we about to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be getting into our topic of the night. Uh, pandering gone wrong. Uh, so stay tuned. Y'all <laughs> tuned into the Hold a Husband podcast. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audio book. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audio book is perfect for you. 
You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audiobook is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hold a Husband Podcast. Tonight's episode is titled Pandering Gone Wrong. Uh, and we're going to share our thoughts on uh, the scandal involving relationship guru, book, uh, national bookseller, uh, Derek Jackson. Um, <laughs> we got a bunch of different places that we can start. Um, but before we do all that, I, I want to play a video of Derek um, sharing his thoughts about men that have been caught cheating. Let's take a look. Another woman takes your man. Don't even trip. First off, everything that you lose ain't a loss, and that applies here. Secondly, I get it, it's like, well, she's taking everything I invested into him. No, she ain't. She about to take everything he was using to stress you out while blaming it on you, she just don't know it yet. And it seems like he's able to give her, you know, all of these different fruits of, of your labor, you know, all of this good treatment, this money, whatever. He was only able to do that because he was giving you the rest of him. He was giving her the best while giving you the rest. Now that she's in your spot, he about to give her the rest. He's about to give her all of that depression he was projecting onto you because he don't need no therapist. That's what she about to get. That's all she's taking from you. She's taking his criticism. Whenever his money get low, she's about to take on all of the, that neglect, those excuses, how little that he was willing to help you around the house. And But whenever he took out the trash once a week, he wanted to be treated like a cane. That's what she about to get. Man, it's so crazy how... <laughs> how much this man was able to monetize himself man you know what i'm saying like like you would hear about artists that that pour their pain into their music and pour their song right this dude made a whole brand talking about toxic dudes like himself <laughs> like so so <laughs> On one hand, it's like, damn, bro, that's that's brilliant. You know what I'm saying? Like, but mm -hmm. what kind what kind of level of integrity do you have, dog? No. Like, I, I, as a married man, you know, and somebody that's popular in the relationship space, uh, I've I've done I've had him on my podcast before. We've had conversations before, uh, and when we talked, to chopped it up. It's very similar, like how men used to chop it up as deep. Uh, and so I always felt like. I couldn't really tell if it was a hunt was pandering or not because there would be some truth to what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? Like I oh I just looked at it like he's only targeting toxic dudes and fucked up men and he's never holding women accountable. Um and so I I'm not shocked at all to, to find out the scandals continuing. Um and him and his wife, man, they I don't. I feel sorry for their kids. They ain't gonna never be able to live this down. Not at yeah, all. You know the 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 thing about pandering is that there's always some truth to it, but mm -hmm. the problem is is that they make it so broad to where every woman will praise it as if every one of them is going through that. Like he's like, oh, he about to take her this. Uh, he about to take her this depression, this neglect, mm -hmm. these excuses that he has. And every woman will say, yep, that's right. Yep. He gonna take, because even though you don't know the situation and you don't know anything about what she did or how she contributed to maybe his neglect or his excuses, you don't know anything about it. But you make these blanket statements out there that every woman can latch on to and blame the man. Ain't the man wrong. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. what a lot of them do anyway. But it really, this here video had to be pre, had to be recorded before this latest scandal part came out of him having this other woman. Because there's no way he's going to say, oh, your spot just opened up now. And, and tell all these women, your, your side chick spot just opened up. Like, he not going to do right. that. But that's, but that's what happens when you talk in circles like that and you back yourself into a corner with a bunch of pandering nonsense just to sell tickets and, and or sell books or whatever. That's just what it is. Everything. T-shirts, yep. games, cards. Yep. <laughs> but it, it, just, it just shows he has zero integrity 
because it sounded like in that video alone, this sounds like it was, he was projecting his own life on other people, right? He, he portrayed himself as this kind of moral authority and finger wagging at everybody else. Remember when saying. Kevin Hart got caught cheating? Remember he was there yeah, going he, Kevin Hart, finger wagging at him? See, and that's what makes it so worse, right? Like he's calling out other men and pointing out other people's situations and you being a hypocrite. And that's that's yeah. one of the the worst things that 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 you can be on on the social media, and that's one of one of the reasons that I take so much pride in being authentic. Like, can't nobody expose me? Can't no can't no chick screenshot me? Can't nobody? You know what I'm saying? Like, can't I'm not gonna be on no scandal like this where I got to do an interview embarrassing my wife? You know what I mean? But but that's the thing. He he embarrassed that his wife in public one too many times. And remember that she had a viral video a couple of weeks ago, but she, where it just looked like she just had a metal breakdown. Remember that and from after that cringeworthy video he did with her, where she was looking like a hostage holding her hand. <laughs> I mean, it's sad. It's sad. You know what I mean? Because oh, just imagine what that's like. Like, okay, you go viral on, on a bad moment, that goes away. But when your husband is this, he's created this figure that women really, that women still buy into him. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, and, and it's so crazy because I remember when I first got followers or whatnot, he's always, he was kind of put up as like the opposite of Terry Duran. Like yeah. they, women would hate me for being real and brutally honest. And they say, like, you need to be like Gary Jackson. We finally got a real man. You need to be like Gary Jackson. I'm like, but I'm the one that's married. I'm the one that's keeping it real. But that's who they praise. It's, so. But men, you know what's crazy? Uh, other men can see right through it. Men yeah. can see right through a phony. We know a phony when uh, we see a phony or hear a phony. Especially right. especially a dude like that because he used to be really big from what I heard, like like a fat guy. And then he got muscles. Well, really? He's getting, yeah. No, well, he I didn't know that. Football, I thought he was a former football player. He yeah, played, he, yeah, he he played he college wasn't. football at Tuskegee. Right, but during high school, I think he was oh, just a know big that. boy. He was just a big boy. Uh, he got himself in shape later on. He got right. himself in shape to where but, now he, he got muscles and all that. And now he's getting all this attention. Because he got married yeah. early in his early 20s. He got married. Was, that was his college sweetheart or high school sweetheart, if I'm not mistaken. High school, Man, you, you know what? Yeah. I remember uh, I, I accidentally disclosed that he was married. Uh, I think it was like I didn't even know. It was a couple That's years back, crazy. right? He came on my, he came, I had him on my podcast or whatever. Uh, and when we had to like reschedule, he was like, oh man, I was on my honeymoon. And so when we went on air, I was like, man, congrats on your honeymoon. And he was like, oh, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like an awkward moment. I didn't know it was a secret. You know what I mean? Like, so I had asked. Of course it was a secret. The beast. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So, I what? never knew the dude was married for a long, until he what? got in trouble. What? Because hey, he yeah. never posted his girl. Like, he never no, posted we his didn't wife. Even, we didn't know what she looked like. We couldn't pick her out a lot. Before that scandal happened a couple of years ago, we couldn't pick her out of the lineup until that video. He was yeah, always everybody. posting yeah. videos of that Yeah, car. I didn't know until he started getting exposed when they were like, man, he got a he got a baby mama. That I'm like, whoa, he got a baby mama on the side. Like, like so I felt like, damn, bro, I'm up here chopping it up with you, having you on my podcast and all this. Yeah. And you a fraud? Like but, to me, I, I just can't can't respect right. it. Like but he's like your typical kind of he's like basically like your pimp pastor in the church. Kind of, you know, the one that's always single wagging everybody <laughs> else, but smashing the smashing the church members on the side. That's what he is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad look, but look, look, he in in the part of that scandal I I had um heard just from reading about it or whatever, that he had chicks in his house. Yes, and he his yeah. allegedly and that he bro. shares with his wife allegedly shout right? out to tasha k and, bro her investigation and her <laughs> you know the way and, she present the story bro she she's she's on it you got, know what i'm saying like she got to, she, she got, got, to the got all the receipts <laughs> she got but, all the receipts but he still got over a million followers that are 98 percent women up there 99 percent women Still, even though he did this, and he sad, did some though. of the worst yeah. things to his wife. Some of the worst things, and we all do things like they, they all hate it. Young they men. all hate cheaters. They, hate they, it, they claim they hate all this, but they still man. support him. You know what I mean? Fellas, so, fellas, man, the most disrespectful thing, especially if you're cheating, is have another chick 
in your house, in the bed that y'all both sleep on. That's one of the most disrespectful things you could do to somebody. Yeah, man. Bro, I, but, but, you know, when I, when I just knew that he didn't have no shame at all, after the scandal came out, he came across my timeline a couple weeks later selling a how to survive cheating like package. I saw that. You know what I'm saying? I saw that. <laughs> I mean, like, listen, bro, read the room, this, dog. But this yeah. is the same man when he was when he was talk, when he was, had his wife in that video. He was referring to himself in third person. Yeah, he was. Like, that he tells was. you everything you need to it know. Was, it was crazy, man. But you know what, man? I did something like this in my in my twenties, but I was a young hoe at the time, and bro, I got caught. I can. I wasn't married. Can cheating. I but but married, even if you, everybody, I've cheated. I, 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 it's, that's not yeah. what I'm, I mm. criticize him about. Like, there's a difference between yeah, yeah. me saying, hey, I cheated before. These are the reasons why I cheated. This yeah. could have prevented me from right. cheating. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, explaining why it happened. Mm -hmm. Doing what he's doing ain't helping nobody. Is you're but, getting clout and points from talking down on other men that are exactly like you. But, but the difference between, let's just say, somebody like you, Terry, and somebody like Derek Jackson, you know, you're a married man, but you're authentic. This is who you are in real life. You know, from somebody that's, you know, met you, been with you in, in person, this is you in real life and you're pretty transparent. Like you said, <laughs> when you cheated on your wife, you were pretty transparent and you stated the reason why. You you explained on here on a couple of episodes before, right? So we know who you are right. in real life. Derek Jackson wasn't transparent at all. He was doing this pretty shamelessly. Yeah. And it's not that we expect that, like, nobody's perfect. People no. are going to do things and, and make uh, mistakes. Uh, errors and but, mistakes or whatever the case. It's it's about how, you know what I'm saying, this particular person goes about it after, yeah. after um, dogging other men about the same thing. What? not and, and, for, and for monetary gain, but, to make him a $4 okay, million so, dollar millionaire. That's so so it. let's take it. So even after the making of millions to getting the women and all brainwashing women and all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you go from a married man to parading around town with an IG model. She ain't even a, mo a model where have you seen I mean, pictures? Yeah, like come I'm on, just man. saying. I, I mean that's a very loose turn. <laughs> all right, very loose. She's what a you five mean? at best. <laughs> Damn, but, hey, but you know dang, what? Dang, you you kind of harsh with that. I thought she yeah, was cute. I, I would say she's a five, bro. Then you go, I would, you know. Listen, but, but when I, I saw see, the woman was a trans. Listen, go ahead. anytime I see glued down baby hair on your forehead right here, <laughs> oh. glued down, glued down wig baby hair. It ain't even yours. Real baby hair is fine, <laughs> but wig baby hair right here. <laughs> and, and man, listen. You ain't as bad as you think you are. But that, that all that Instagram fame make a lot of these chicks think that they are yeah. nicer than what they are. And she's really not. And there's no no knock. Like I ain't I ain't even trying to be funny. I'm just saying for me, Shorty is a five at best. And a ratchet five, too. Like she making videos <laughs> saying, yeah. And in the video she made, like, yeah, I took your I took your man and all this. Like, you you Oh, you I didn't know about that. It. Yeah, she put yeah. it in the comments on, on Derek Jackson's wife's page. After yeah. that, she put her page to private. She, played, she, she oh. posted a video and like, yeah, I took your man like a song. I forgot the song, but it's like, yeah, I took your man this and that. Like a ratchet what? vibe. Like, bro, this what but, you out here with? But you know what? Man, I feel so sorry for his wife, yeah, bro. I, I do too. Like, she, she's going to need really, therapy yeah. for sure, for sure. Because, yeah. I mean, but, this is never going to go away. Like, she, she's... She become a meme because of the bonnet thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. A couple weeks ago, she was she lashed out towards the public and and was like doubled down on her marriage and then filed for divorce. It's like, hey man, do you know what that? Do y'all know what that 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 uh, after divorce sloppy top is gonna be like? Ooh, hey. wait, <laughs> that's not, that's gonna be some that's gonna be some I right, that's gonna be some hurt sloppy top coming up out of here, man. He's gonna be let, letting off some steam there. But man, another listen. thing, yeah. But another thing where where like where he goes wrong, where he loses credibility, you know, because he made a stick off of having this holier than thou kind of image. You know, yeah, that's what he portrayed himself yeah, as. Church. Hey, I'm he this wholesome it. husband. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. do that kind of stuff. I'm above this stuff, right? Yeah. The, like the titles so, of the books like, be having, yeah. re, re, you know, like you know, God, this and 
Think man, it's almost- all those pandering, the, the, the yeah. John Grays, the, you- the Ace Metaphors, the Derek Jackson, yeah. all these dudes that are playing on what women and then, already think and feel. It's the same yeah. stuff over and over but, again. But there's the thing, here's the thing, you can't, like, if you're going to present yourself as holy and thou, you got to really be living that life for real. Like, for example, same thing like Tiger Woods. Once they found a chink in your armor, they come after you. So if you're going to present yourself a holy and thou image, you really got to be living that life in real life for real. Yeah, but most women don't want to deal with no dude that's really living that life. Look at look at uh, old boy Megan Good's husband. Mm. You know what I'm saying? How many yeah. how many women you see uh, the other day when they post, hey, what celebrity Nine. would you like? I didn't see no ladies post him. He's single now. I didn't yeah. see a single woman say Devin Franklin. <laughs> that's a good, wholesome man right there. None of them. Like, they don't right. want to be bothered with them holier-than-thou dudes. And then get, you know what I'm saying, all upset when they deal with the hoes. You know, this this here particular situation, I hope his wife finds herself a really good dude. I know I just joked about the sloppy top a minute ago. But I hope she finds herself a really good dude because he about to wild out. He already wilding out, but he really Well, fortunately, I mean, she's going to walk away with a bag. You know, she she's she there from... some money. Yeah, so she'll so she, she should, she'll be fine uh, financially. Um child support whatever they decide to do the, the kids will be taken care of um, I, I was gonna say uh i haven't heard anything about him not being a good dad um but it's 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 just crazy that when when you get put paraded around as this hero this 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 you know relationship goal type of husband or boyfriend and it's off of all of a facade where the real men are constantly having to have these battles where women are criticizing us for just thinking and acting like men. Even though we're not abusing women, we're not we're not using our resources in a bad way. We are taking care of our kids, being good fathers, etc. None of that really compares to the praise and, and the uh, respect you get for pandering. Yeah. So yep. so do y'all think do y'all think he gonna have trouble getting getting a bunch of women? Absolutely Hell not. Not. Hell not, at this, not. Not at this point of his career, this chunks of his life. I all. mean, he, he don't want to be with one woman, and it's way easier to be single than to be in a committed relationship. Ooh, look at especially, that. Especially, you know, <laughs> he's blown up. He has that that he has now. He'll have no problem. Going he got the looks. He, he was, got the money. I mean, you got a negative negative image. I mean, was, you know what I'm saying? But, it don't even matter. But that's what that's yeah. what a lot of women I mean, like. I mean, he was down there in Miami with that woman. I mean, he going out of Miami single himself. I mean, there'll be tons of women flocking out. There'll be if he gets, goes gets a room in a fine blue. There'll be women standing in the lobby where he throw their pants up as soon as he walks in the lobby. There, <laughs> Shit. man, I'm telling you, I wouldn't even stand in the fountain blue when they were throwing panties at me. I pulled up on the scooter. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what's up? That's how I be, you know, man. When you go fountain blue yeah, out in club, Miami, club club live on Sundays. Can you diamonds Monday? <laughs> yeah, oh, hey man, that's what it is. So he ain't gonna have an issue. He gonna he gonna have it way easier to get women than it is for his uh, wife to get wife to get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if she easier. probably she's probably not gonna even date for a very long time. She's gonna have the kids sure. and all that. Um, sure. I I just don't know. Like, man, it, it sucks. The the main reason that I built my brand on being real and being authentic. The Hold a Husband podcast. I'm a former ho. I've been a husband almost 20 years. All of that is is so easy to stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody pull up a clip of a podcast from four years ago, it's going to be the exact same philosophies, the exact same logic or reason. Exactly. So I don't have to try to keep up with nothing. I can just be real. I can talk. Yeah, yeah. I I double tap my ass pitch and I follow thoughts. Like, yeah, I do it. But you know what? Even when you went on Harley Initiated, you kept real. You said, hey, listen, if for every reason I ever got a divorce, I don't think I would get married again. And here's why. You were pretty transparent yeah. on that. All the I, women I, hated some it. Some people talked they the hated about too. it. They, they did? did. Uh, I don't yeah. the comments well, I got well, why? I posted that. <laughs> well, said, I, I, I wonder, wonder how his comments. wife feel or what his wife was saying. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The first thing they said. Yeah, they were upset about it. I mean, that. what like difference do it make if... If, if we're not together, what difference do it make what she would think or feel about it? But the reason, uh-huh. the only reason to get married is if you want a family. Like, if you just want to be single, then you you don't need to be married to do that. I don't want no more kids, and I don't want to be married again. 
So if I if our marriage didn't work, I'm gonna be bachelor of the year. Y'all gonna y'all <laughs> gonna tough. be sent. <laughs> it's tough out I here, mean, man. It's tough to be married too. You know what I mean? Like eat all of it. It just depends on, on on what position you're in. Uh, yeah. It's sad that I, I I don't like it. It seems like every major couple that I I've seen is getting divorced lately. Um, so it, it's sad in that sense to, to hear the uh, news of it. Um, but it caused such a a a storm because of the content that he creates. You know what I mean? Like if I don't think if if I announced that I was getting divorced, I talk about how hard marriage is. I talk about the struggles. Like I don't think. I, I wouldn't I mean, be getting roasted. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I mean, hell, we we even had your wife as a guest, and you know, y'all were both pretty transparent on how your marriage is, how it went before, what were some obstacles y'all faced. Y'all were transparent that, like I said, with him, he wasn't transparent in anything. Only only time we seen his wife was when he got caught up in, in the schedule initially. Other than that, he was recording videos at his car. Yeah, well, that's because yeah. he was. That's because he was, <laughs> you know, dropping dick off at different spots. So you, when you drop, <laughs> when you drop dick off, you got to keep it moving. You got to record in the car when you're going to drop dick off. <laughs> when you got dick appointments, I mean, it is what it is, um, man. You know what I'm saying? They mad at the guy, but you know, I hope everything I mean, you know works yeah, out. I man. mean, you know, listen, he right, right, he out there in Atlanta, so he's not gonna have trouble finding women out there. Where he's at, dude. You ain't gonna have trouble oh, finding me. women nowhere when you a top when you a top earner <laughs> and you're decent no. looking. You gonna get women everywhere you go. You go when you a guy like that. I don't care where you go. You ain't gonna have no shortage of women. So when a guy is single or he wants to live a single life or whatever, he's either enjoying the single life. He gonna hit the or, he gonna hit the streets running. Yep. Yeah, or he's looking for something specific, something that's exactly what he wants. Them the two things, because he ain't got a uh, lack of options, and he won't. Yep. Even though, even though he did what he did to his wife, it's women lined up in his DM to sign up and take our place on a chance. Absolutely, that's what yep. that's what it is. So, all right, man, look like we up against the clock, fellas. Um, Man, it's been a real interesting uh, episode. Yep. Uh, before we get up out of here, man, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions, for keeping us laced with our background audio. Uh, I want to remind y'all to continue donating through our Cash App and our PayPal. Uh, and to let you remind y'all, y'all can check out the podcast on Spotify now. Uh, JSD, man, I appreciate y'all re- linking up. Uh, oh, good really? luck in y'all fantasies. Well, not necessarily good luck to everybody. <laughs> well, well, we ain't. Uh, all, well, we, I don't think we all played each other. Here. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm playing Maybe SD this week weekend, we so, oh, so okay. I'm gonna give you the gentlemanly good luck. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we we'll see how the energy is next week, y'all. Uh, yeah. This has been another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast. Y'all have peace. Hey.